Good afternoon. Yeah. Good afternoon, Detroit. I'm going to try to get people's attention. I'll see if it works. Good afternoon, Detroit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I feel better. Welcome to Michigan Central. Welcome to a new lab at Michigan Central. This is those of you who know me know I'm not big on hyperbole, but this is an incredible moment. This is a huge milestone for so many of us. This is an incredible celebration today, and we're so happy to have all of you in this literally veritable cathedral of innovation right here. Michigan Central is alive and happening, and we have a lot to celebrate today. First, we celebrate the extraordinary power of vision and the courage to execute it. The vision that Bill Ford, Mary Culler, the Ford executive leadership team had of creating an open platform of innovation is real, and it's happening right here. We celebrate partnership. We're thrilled to have Mayor Duggan Lieutenant Governor Gilchrist here with us today. We know Governor Whitmer was sad that she wasn't able to join us today. And the many colleagues in the state and the city, MEDC, LEO, the city council, and our many, many elected officials and, and council members, and all of our incredibly important and numerous community partners. Um, we really celebrate partnership with all of you. And our partners at Google, and our new partnership with Ted, we're very lucky to have today with us Lindsay Levin. Lindsay, Lindsay, Lindsay is the head of impact and partnerships at Ted. In a few minutes, she's going to be conducting a conversation with Bill right here. Lindsay and her colleagues are also bringing 700 global leaders to Detroit in July for three days for Ted's Countdown Global Summit right here in Detroit, and right here in New Lab at Michigan Central. <laughs> Speaking of New Lab, I want to acknowledge our partners at New Lab. I noticed the only person who's supposed to be in the front row is not is my good friend David Belt, co-founder of New Lab. Those of you who know David realize he's probably, there's a reason he's not in the front row. Um, but also David's co-founder, Scott Cohen, um, the rock star Liz Keen, who's around here somewhere, the whole team at New Lab, who's literally, there's nobody. There he is. This is a man who knows how to make an entry. There's really nobody in the world who understands how to cultivate the future like New Lab. We're honored to bring them to Detroit. We're honored to have them as our partners here at Michigan Central. We celebrate this amazing city. I'm a guest in this city. It's an honor to be able to say this. We celebrate the people, the perseverance, the underlying spirit, and there's literally nowhere else in the world that Michigan Central could happen than Detroit. And we celebrate this incredible building and what it's witnessed. Think about the decades sorting mail coming through tunnels from the station the decades storing books and supplies for Detroit school kids, the 35 years sitting empty and hollow, and think about what it is now today. This is an incredible celebration as this building embarks on its next generation. We celebrate the power of design. The professionals at Gensler, Gafari, Civilian really helped us unleash the power of this building. We celebrate the 1,490 workers at Barton Mallow and all of the other subcontractors who made the work happen here over the last five years. And we celebrate teamwork. The Michigan Central team is second to none. I have to call out the extraordinary Carolina Plazinski. Those Those of you who know Carolina, no, none of us would be here without Carolina. 
and the entire Michigan Central team has been extraordinary. And our partners, Jim Dobleski and his entire team at Ford Land, incredible job overseeing the restoration of this building and working with us on so many things at Michigan Central. It's humbling to be a part of this team, and I'm grateful. But we also celebrate what's to come. Michigan Central is a story just starting to unfold. The impact of the work here is going to be profound. It's not hyperbole to say that a path to a more sustainable, a more equitable future could get invented in this building. And it's not just the work itself, but who's doing the work. It's not just the companies, it's the people involved. It may be companies that invent amazing things. It may be the Detroit student who gets skills training here and goes on to change the world. It's really the full picture of what we can do here in Detroit. Already, we have 33 companies operating this building, and this is literally day one. And half of those companies are from Detroit, and the other half are literally from around the country and around the world, including some that turned around on their way to Austin, Texas, others that contacted us from Europe and said, we need to be there. And we're just getting started. That's over 150 jobs today on day one, the vast majority of which are net new. I thought it only appropriate to ask one of the founders of one of those companies that's part of New Lab at Michigan Central to join me in welcoming you. Natalie King is the founder and CEO of Dunamis Clean Energy Partners. She's a far better voice than I am on why this work is so important, why Detroit, why Michigan Central, why New Lab, and why now. Natalie, come join me. Thank you, Josh. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Natalie King. And I am the president and CEO of Dunamis Clean Energy Partners and Dunamis Charge. And as a native Detroiter, born and raised, I think that I can speak for every Detroiter today to say, this is really, really cool to see this, to see the re-emergence. It's a phenomenon. You know, I, I sent Josh my speech over earlier today, and I just scrapped all of it as soon as I walked into the building. Because I remember growing up as, I'm not going to tell my age, but I was a youngster. And when Michigan Central, when the train station stopped operating, and we saw the decline of that, and it really kind of represented an error for the city of where we were, and to see that reemergence and to see the integration of sustainability and innovation and clean energy technology and mobility that is really creating an intersection between mobility and technology and how we live, how we move people and how we move product around in our city in an effective, sustainable, efficient way and in an inclusive way, in an equitable way. That is what Michigan Central represents. And, Michi and Dunamis Charge, as the first black woman-owned EV charger manufacturer in this world, located right here in the city of Detroit. You know, I'm a city girl, and I made a commitment to make sure that our manufacturing plant was located right here in the city of Detroit, hiring city of Detroit workers, black and brown communities, environmental justice communities, to ensure that everyone plays a part in this electrification boom and in the mobility industry. Michigan Central and New Lab represents that push to include all of us. I see so many people here that I know. Camille Terry from Charger Help out of Los Angeles is now going to be locating here, right in the city of Detroit, providing operations and maintenance and repair for EV infrastructure all over this country. And so we're, we're not only attracting talent like that, but we're uplifting talent that's homegrown and raised here. Collaborations, innovation, mentorship, capital raise opportunities will all be housed here in New Lab. We're excited and we're proud to be a part of the new lab in Michigan Central ecosystem. So I say thank you everyone that has made this happen and we're very, very excited about the future. Thank you.
Thanks. Thank you, Natalie. And now we will start with the rest of our program. Thank you. I've always believed that mobility makes freedom and progress possible. We want the best startups, the smartest talent, the kind of thinkers, engineers, and problem solvers who see things differently to come and partner with us here in Detroit. Every movement begins with an idea, a point. A point in motion creates a line, a road to a better future. For over a hundred years, our roads have led to this magnificent place. In many ways, it tells the story of our city and of America. A place that means so much to so many. One that became a symbol of our city's challenges. So, what if we could remake Michigan Central into a place of possibility again? A global episode for breakthroughs that improve people's lives. Today, Albert Kahn's iconic book depository is the beating heart of Michigan Central. And inside, the work is underway. An open platform for inventors, artists, and problem solvers. Reimagining mobility to help solve the many challenges we face. Rethinking cities so that the air is cleaner and the streets less congested. Helping people thrive and live more independent lives. Expanding access to a world of possibilities. If you have a big idea, let's create tomorrow together. And hello, everybody. It is a huge privilege. I love this city, by the way. I've been visiting for many years since I moved to the States. It is a huge privilege to be here with you all today. I'm very excited to be part of this conversation. And Bill, here we are really seeing a vision come to life. What, what does today mean for you? <laughs> well, first of all, hey, everybody. Uh, and thank you for all, uh, all so many of you have done for us. Uh, I'm so happy to see so many members of the Ford family here, uh, my cousin Edsel who's done so much for our company and our community. Um, a special shout out to Tom Buell, uh, who, without whom we wouldn't be in Corktown. So thank you, Tom, for everything you've done. Um, and I could go on and on and, and thank so many people. Uh, Josh did a great job of thanking them all. Um, and I won't repeat them, but my heart is with them. And I special shout out, though, to my good friend, uh, Mike Duggan, who uh, has been with us every step of the way and from day one encouraged us to just get going. Uh, and he's been great. So thank you, Mayor, for everything you've done as well. Yeah, yeah but I mean, this is, this is exactly what I wanted to see happen here. You know, um, I guess in 2009, I started a venture capital company to invest in mobility. M most people didn't know what mobility even meant back then. But it was clear to me that our world was going to change. And we've done a lot. Uh, and over the years, and particularly in the early years, we kind of invented the mobility space, uh, the venture capital firm did. But it occurred to me that almost none of it was happening here in Detroit, that our investments were all around the world, and particularly in California. But I, it re, you know, I realized that if Ford Motor Company, Detroit, and our whole region, we're going to really lead the next century in terms of how people moved and, and also where they lived and how they accessed all that. It had to happen here. So this building and what's going on here today, Josh mentioned we've already got 33 companies. They're, some are from Detroit. Some are from the metro region. Many are from outside of Detroit, and one's even from Norway. The best and the brightest are coming here to invent things to help us with a f the future that we need in this community, and I couldn't be more excited. So Bill, I, I want to talk about the ideas that got us here. So back in 2011, you gave a TED talk. TED is still very proud of that talk. I re-watched it this week, and I was struck by how prescient it was. You were talking about what you cared about, what you were passionate about. You were talking about how the world was changing, the, you know, the, where we were with congestion in a crowded world, the environment, and your love of 
of cars and trucks and how you thought about mobility. And I wonder if you could just say a little bit about the, the path from those ideas 12 years back to the opening of the book today. Well, I look a lot younger then, I can say that much. Uh, the, uh, no, it was quite a path, and most people thought I was, you know, probably crazy, uh, because I envisioned a world that was very different than the one we were living in. Um, but it was one in which, um, you know, I grew up in a world where cars and trucks were the greatest things in the world. Uh, everybody loved them, people were writing songs about them, um, and particularly if you lived in Michigan, you never heard anything bad about them. But it didn't take long to travel around the world to see the air pollution, to see the, the crushing congestion where people literally couldn't get to work um, and they couldn't get home if they got to work. Right. And so it occurred to me that our, our industry had to change. Um, and that was something that, you know, that we talked about in that TED Talk all those years ago. But to get from there to today you know, has not been linear. Uh, there were a lot of fits and starts. But I think we're really on, on the right path now. In fact, I know we are. And our industry is, our industry woke up. Uh, you know, we were a very insular industry in an oftentimes insular community because, and we all talked to each other and said how great we were. But the rest of the world didn't see us that way. And so, um, and it was clear to me that the kind of innovation that had to drive this, this industry forward had to take place. And I wanted it to take place in Detroit. And I mean, now, here we are, 12 years later, 2023, as you look out at the world and you think of some of the challenges that this, this place may help address, what's changed and what really strikes well, you? Well, I about think there's a going? realization now in the world that things have to change. And uh, so you see the, the kind of companies that are here working on, you know, uh, artificial intelligence, they're working on autonomy, uh, not just autonomy for the vehicles, but autonomy for um, different parts of your life. Uh, delivery, the last mile of delivery has to change. So you see you know, companies working with robots, companies working with drones. Um, all these kinds of things are you know, not science fiction. They're all actually ready for the marketplace and they're coming now. So, um, you know, but we have a unique opportunity here that no other community has. Look, it occurred to me that California was where a lot of this was going on. Yes, they have great beaches. Yes, they have great weather. Uh, and they have big tech campuses. But they don't have this. Right. They don't have a vibrant downtown community. They don't have a neighborhood like Corktown. They don't have the ability to work with big OEMs like the startups here will uh, have the ability to do. Um, and they won't have the ability then to graduate to other neighborhoods here once they get big enough and continue to work with the OEMs to bring their vehicles, right. or not just vehicles, all their products to market. So um, we have things here that other communities can't match. We just weren't doing them, uh, and now we are. So, so let's talk about talent, because I know part of the vision for you and the leaders here is to identify talent, to find talent in different places, to nurture people. Can you speak a little bit about why and how that's important to you? Look, any company is only as good as its people. And we're in a war for talent. And we, Ford is, our industry is, the city of Detroit, and our region. And uh, talent can go anywhere. I mean, talent can choose to live you know, anywhere they want. And we have to make it worth their while to come here. And I believe that's what we've done here, and that's what we're going to do next door at Michigan Central. We're going to create the kind of workspace that people are going to love to be in. Why? Because, first of all, they can collaborate here in this building with other entrepreneurs. Two, they can make things here, right. um, which is really hard to do in many other locations. Three, they, as I said just a second ago, they can start to work with OEMs. The great thing about this building is this isn't a closed building. This isn't a Ford kind of building. This is an open platform. Our companies here can work with Ford if they want. They can work with GM. They can work with Stellantis. They can work with the Tier 1 suppliers. Um, and that's all great. It occurred to me early on that if we made this a Ford-only kind of thing, right. it wasn't going to reach its potential. It couldn't reach its potential. We wanted to invite everybody in here and to collaborate. So. Um, we, I, I want to just draw a little bit more about this, this idea of an ecosystem, because I think I mean, one, one of the things I'm observing is that the relationship between small companies and big companies 
is changing, is becoming more pronounced. You can actually only solve your biggest problems by forming these kind of collaborations and ecosystems. Could, could you speak a little bit more about that, especially from the perspective of being part of a very large company? Well, big companies traditionally have been impossible to work with for small companies. Um, and, you know, and, and Ford was no exception. I mean, I can't tell you the number of startups that have come to me over the years saying, you know, hey, thanks for the introduction to Ford, but we got lost in the system. Or, you know, we're five people. We can't fill out, you know, these enormous forms that we have to fill out and spend all this time going through your bureaucracy. So, um, you know, it wasn't the small company's fault. In fact, it was the big company's right. fault that didn't know how to not smother, not kill, and not turn their back on these small companies. And I think there was also a realization that it, in some places in, in the OEMs that, well, even if these companies have good ideas, they're too small to move the needle for us, so why should we even bother? Right. Um, that's thankfully changing, maybe not fast enough, but it is changing, you know, and I know it's changing at Ford. Uh, we spent a lot of time, and Jim Farley and I talk about this all the time, about how we actually are approachable, and then what, what do we do with these young companies? How do we shepherd them through the Byzantine process of, you know, Ford Motor Company? And um, we got a ways to go, but we're better. And I think, um, to your point also, we certainly don't have a monopoly on good ideas. Um, and that's something I think that's also, it struck me in 2009 when I started this venture capital firm that most of Detroit's companies weren't aware of what was going on around the, west of the, around the rest of the world. Right. And in places like Silicon Valley and Boston and Austin, Texas. Um, and that, you know, and once I saw what was going on, I thought, oh my gosh, we got to bring that here and we have to make it, we, but we can't just say come to Detroit because, you know, particularly back then, Detroit didn't have the greatest national right. image. Uh, it's different now. Um, and there's a buzz around Detroit, and you hear it nationally. Right. But even that's not enough. We had to provide really unique spaces for these young companies and actually for our own employees to want to come to. Right. And, and I know part of the vision here is about community, creating new communities, but also working for the existing community. Do you see a blueprint here that's likely to be copied elsewhere when you think about that? Well, I mean, I, I don't know how you can copy what we've got here. I think uh, so much of what we've got here is unique, and actually I hope it kind of is. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't want this to be too easy to copy. Um, you know, I think if what we can do here is unique. You know, we have this corridor called Michigan Avenue that runs from here out to Ann Arbor and has every kind of traffic and pedestrian uh, possible combination along the way. That's not going to be replicated anywhere else. We have the streets of Detroit. We have one street that's now uh, being built for inductive charging where you, you drive your EV and it charges as you drive. Uh, you know, those kinds of you know, other cities haven't been as good as Mike Duggan. Uh, I'll tell you that much. Um, and so, um, you know, he's open to any kind of crazy ideas that we have. He says, yeah, let's, let's give it a shot. So um, we, I don't think other cities can replicate this, and if we do our job right, they'll never be able to. Well, speaking of Mike Duggan, this, none of this would happen without partnership. I want to invite Mayor Duggan and also Lieutenant Governor Gilchrist to join us on stage and just speak a little bit about your experience of partnership and what this means for you. And I, I, I must say, too, that the state has been fantastic as well. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it is a true private partner, uh, public partnership. And, you know, the state's been so receptive and really enthusiastic for, you know, and, and very helpful to everything we want to do. So thank you so much, Lieutenant Governor, for all of that. Bill, it's really a pleasure to be here. And it is amazing when a beautiful and inspired plan comes together. I want to congratulate you, the entire Michigan Central team, Ford, all of the partners who worked with the city, the region, to make this a reality. You know, I believe that ideas are what drive the world forward. And I believe that we have the potential to make Michigan the best place to have a good idea. And with platforms like this available to creative minds that were born, bred, fed, and raised here, and those that need to be here to be their best, I can't think of a better place to have an idea in the state of Michigan because of this type of work. Thank you. Governor 
can you just build a little bit on that? When you think about jobs here in the state, you think about investment here in the state, could you say a little bit more about what you see as you look around you in terms of the opportunity? So Governor Gretchen Whitmer and I, our, our number one job is to create the conditions for people to be successful, to create more pathways and access to opportunity. And one of the best ways to raise your quality of life is to have a great way to make an income by creating jobs. And those jobs are created by the innovators that are going to be building companies in places like this entire Michigan Central Campus. So we need to make sure that we are investing in people's education, starting all the way from before they can walk to all the way to when they can then have this entrepreneurial idea as a young person to be able to make it successful. The governor and I are proud of the, the jobs we've created in the mobility space broadly, but we're also proud of the jobs we've created across different sectors. There's a reason that Michigan is the number one state in terms of energy sector job growth. And the innovators here will take that to a higher level. And the integration between the different industries is really what's going to make this sing, this project. Because it's not going to be one sector that pulls the state of Michigan forward. It's going to be the collaborative atmosphere that we create where people inspire one another to challenge one another and to be more bold in their thinking. And Governor Whitmer are proud to be a partner and a part of that. Thank you. Thank you very much. So Mayor, Mayor Duggan, we'd love to hear from your point of view, uh, how does this look and feel and what does this moment mean? It, this, I have to say this, this is Bill Ford's moment. I mean, <laughs> it, let me tell you the, the story of how we got here. I heard a rumor six years ago Ford was looking for something, so I called Bill, sat down in his office in Dearborn. And I said, what are you thinking? And he laid out a vision that says, we are going to compete with Silicon Valley, but we're going to get our designers of the vehicles of the future out of the glass house into a different environment where they want to be. And he says, my dream is to have a campus that isn't just Ford employees, as any talented person in mobility could come and share. And I'm listening to this vision. I never heard anything like it. And I said, Bill, there's only one place you got to be in Detroit. And we talked back and forth, and I pitched it. He said, let me think about it. Three months later, my phone rings. It's late at night. And Bill says, I've got the site. And I said, what site? <laughs> and he says, the site for our design center. You just got to help me get the building. I said, what are you talking about? He says, the train station campus would be the perfect location. It was a transformational moment for the city of Detroit. I think it's going to prove a transformational moment for the Ford Motor Company. But to think about going from that phone call to this dream coming true, congratulations. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. And then just a final thought for the people of this community. You, you dearly love I know the citizens of Detroit, a final thought for the communities seeing this transformation happen around them. Well, we're, we're, Detroit is moving back to the center of the future of the auto industry. Of course, it's, as Bill well knows, Ford's history and Detroit's history have been tied together uh, since Henry Ford knocked out the wall a few blocks away on Bagley and took his quadricycle uh, down the street. But 10 years ago, this city had 20% unemployment. And I thought we had to go back to our roots. The very first plant we landed was Flexingate. Bill Ford lined them up as a Ford supplier. The last plant we just landed is LM Magna seating plant over on 4th Street that Jim Farley yeah. helped us line up to make seats for Ford trucks. So the relationship goes back for more than 100 years, but it's never been better than it is today. Well, and as Mike and I first got to know each other when we actually did Ford Field together right. all those years ago. Yeah. Right. The, the, the day Bill said, we want to bring the Detroit Lions back from Pontiac if you could just find me a place to play. <laughs> I think this is going to prove bigger for the city's future yeah. than that football stadium was. So gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. Very special evening ahead. I'm going to pass back to Josh for the next stage of our. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank, great. You. thank you all for coming. All right. <laughs> thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor, Bill, Lindsay. Thank you.
We've got a lot of stuff for you all to do. I know it's going to be tempting to just get something to drink, something to eat, and have fun. But we got some work cut out for you. We're going to have, in this space here, we're going to have a couple of curated conversations just to go a layer deeper about what's happening here at Michigan Central. We've got a whole bunch of the companies of New Lab at Michigan Central are here with their products. They're incredibly excited and eager to talk to all of you. Please circulate all around. Literally all over this floor, there are different things, so explore, investigate. In the back corner over here, we have some of the team ready to talk to you about your impressions. How can we be an even better neighbor and community, uh, and do our community engagement even more uh, with Southwest Detroit, with Corktown, with all of the neighborhoods throughout the entire city of Detroit. So make sure to stop by and participate in that survey. Um, and then after you do all that, you can have fun. Uh, and so uh, thank you all for coming. We're thrilled you're here. The program will continue. Uh, and uh, it's a great day for all of us. So thank you.